This might be the worst book I've read in 2024. Hello everyone, my name is Emily, also known as Dietitian EMK, and today we're going to review Mr. Fixer Upper by Lucy Score. It has been two months since I read this book and clearly I'm not over it because here we are still talking about it. This video is going to contain spoilers, dramatic reactions, and very strong opinions. I normally do a spoiler free and a spoiler version of my reviews, but today I just think this book is so bad that I don't think you should read it and I'm gonna tell you why. So we're gonna talk about the plot, specific quotes that really stood out to me, characters, the book cover, and then we'll end with my final thoughts. So without further ado, let's get right into it. The general premise of the book is we have this producer and kind of reality TV star who have this People will probably say enemies relationship, enemies to love relationship. I think it's more of just like, we don't get along and someone's very rude and not considerate or nice at all relationship. But anyway, we follow Paige, our main character. She is a producer and her big dreams are to make a documentary about the misogyny women face in the film industry. Gannon is one of our reality TV stars. He's the love interest. And he kind of like, he works on a home redesign show with his sister where they kind of go around helping out families who are in need and they give them like, they redesign their home and it's very nice. And essentially, uh, based off all you need to know, all you need to know is it's essentially supposed to be this like built up tension. They don't like each other where the tension turns to attraction and then they get together and how they kind of face that. And you'd think the premise would be fun and nice, but no. Honestly, this book was so bad. I don't even have like the mental willpower to dive deep into the plot because everything was just so bad. I think the quotes really speak for themselves and that's what we're gonna focus on today. Our first quote, Oh, before we get into it, grab a snap, grab a drink, or maybe you don't, because honestly, a lot of these made me want to vomit, but <gasps> come along for the ride with some entertainment. Our first quote is, they're just talking about like one of the clients for the TV show. Single mom, Karina with an exotic looking beauty with dark hair and bronzed caramel skin. Can we stop calling people of color exotic looking? And then just like also like international. Can we also stop referring to people's color of skin with food? That's, that's weird. Don't do that. All right, our next quote, as we're just really diving in. This is kind of when like Gannon and Paige first have, like they first like are like vulnerable with each other. And I think there was an accident on set and Paige like got hurt and now Gannon's taking care of her and Gannon realizes he can't lose her. Just listen to this. This is Gannon's perspective. He swiped his hand over his face. It looked as though he was officially awake for the day. As much as he wanted to stay in this bed with Paige, he needed to get back to his room before anyone saw him sneaking shirtless out of hers. Gannon didn't care about much about appearances, but it would upset Paige if people knew that he'd spend the night with her. He'd play ball for now. He switched on the Blah, 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 blah. He could have lost her without ever really having had her. This was no potential fling. These feelings were real and deserved to be explored for both their sakes. They are officially dating whether Paige liked it or not, whether she acknowledged it or not. That sounds consensual. Literally like one of the driving plot points of Paige is like the cons of Paige's story is the constant misogyny she experiences and the different opportunities she doesn't get because she is a woman. And it's just gonna play into it, the way he talks about her and treats her. But literally like one incident has happened and they are like, she's been vulnerable and opened up to him. And now he's like, we're dating, whether she likes it or not or acknowledges it or not. Like he literally only like slept in the same bed as her and he decides that they're dating. He's so considerate and kind of her desires and what she wants. Our next quote, Paige and Gannon had some fight and Paige is at some bar. And this is, this is all that happens. And I need to read this to you because I'm literally like, what is happening 
here. The bartender, a straight faced beauty with an expertly drawn cat eye and black liner, black liner, pointed to her nearly empty glass. Another sure page said, neither enthusiastic about or opposed the idea of drowning her troubles. Whatever. The bartender poured. Penis? She asked. I beg your pardon? Page blinked. Usually the only time that a woman looks the way you look is a penis that turns into an asshole. Why can't we just say like a man? Not all men have penises. I will note that. But to like imagine you're like at a bar and a bartender's like penis. What is happening? What is happening? All right, our next quote. This one makes me really mad. It's only honestly one part of it, but they're having like one of their really big first fights and it's been two months. Two months, it's important. And Ganon drops the I love you bomb. Two months ago, you were going out of your way to fight her and fight with her. And you've been now maybe kind of casually dating for two months. You don't love her. You just want to possess her, Ganon. Like, this felt incredibly manipulative to me. Paige is trying to break up. He's like, but I love you. Oh my gosh. Whatever. All right, the next quote. This one really boiled my blood. One of their main conflicts is another reality star, Megan. Like, there have been rumors that her and Ganon are an item and... All you need to know is like this whole time he's been saying, there's nothing going on, there's nothing going on, there's nothing going on. And then she like drops in on set and kisses him and Paige is like, what the F? And they're having this argument about Paige was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you didn't tell me there was any history there. He's like, no, there's no history. We were never anything. And then she finds out that he slept with her and he never told Page this like he literally slept with Megan and he claims it was like I was swept up in the industry I didn't know what was going on whatever but like you should definitely disclose that information especially when it's about someone that you're having arguments with in your current relationship that information should definitely be disclosed this guy sucks our next one they're still in a fight. It's essentially just Ganon is not respecting her boundaries. This is Ganon's perspective. He was fucking crazy. That was the only explanation for him acting like a damn stalker. She made it clear, crystal clear, that she didn't want to know the truth. Yet here he was on her damn doorstep. Why are we swearing so much? Relax, I know, what? Relax. He had to make her understand and then he would let her have it for not trusting him. Literally, she's upset because you didn't share information. This relationship was already off to a rocky start because of the whole, like, she is a woman in the film industry and she doesn't want to, like, do anything that might even, like, mess up any of her chances. And he's like, she's not trusting me. I'm going to let her have it because she didn't trust me. When you didn't disclose information, bro, like, he's psycho. I can't. Okay, one of the only good parts, I was kind of hoping this, there was this other guy that shows up, another reality star, shows up, he, his name is Drake, and he like saves Paige from a verbal attack by Megan. And I was like, can we date Drake? Can we date Drake? Next one, this is just, he's at some event, whatever. The white Oxford shirt was tucked into his jeans tight enough to display his muscular thighs to their full advantage. He was so raw, so male that even dressed in business casual, there was a predatory air about him. I am afraid. Oh my gosh, Paige, run, run. Literally like, this book had me questioning if I even like men. I was like, this is not it. Our next quote, let's just continue on because there's more. He's like picking her up to go to some dinner, I think, who knows, and it's his car. It was a work truck, she noted, with the king's insignia on the doors. That's Gannon and his sister's last name. On the doors and one of those shiny metal toolboxes mounted in the bed of the truck. It was tall, manly, and completely impractical for city living. Now we're putting genders on, and gender norms on a car? This is the bad place. What is happening? All right, I don't know what's happening outside, but we're gonna wait for it to pass. 
Our next quote, he, it just keeps going. So they agree to be friends and she's like, okay, we have to be platonic. Gannon says this, I need you to know that I don't wanna be just friends with you. I have every intention of wearing you down and getting back in your bed. Kids, what does coercion into sex translate to? It rhymes with grape. What is happening? And the thing is, this book has over a four star average on Goodreads. Granted, like Goodreads, like it's already like uh, there are some debatable books that have above four stars on there. But like, are we reading different books? Oh my god. I'm literally sweating out of anger right now. <laughs> Someone make it end. Okay, and then they're continuing to argue because Gannon finds this new project for Paige to work on. And Paige goes, business and personal don't mix. We already tried that. Gannon goes, for you and me, business is personal. Work is our lives. Everything we do is tangled up like that. And I just want you to understand that while I'm going to depend on your professional skills to make this project happen, to make this shithole a home, I'm going to be working my way back into your life. She goes, what if I tell you no? He goes, to the job or me. Paige goes, is there a difference? And then he goes, I would never hold a job over your head just to get you back in bed. And if you actually think that I would, all he has been talking about this entire book is he's deciding we are in a relationship. He's deciding I'm gonna worm my way back into your life and we're not gonna just be friends. We're gonna be lovers whether you like it or not. Keenan, I think you would hold a job over her head to get into a relationship with her because- You're loco crazy. I'm really glad he knows how to know, take a note for an answer. This next bit is so bad. So they're on this new project together that Paige agreed to because I think it'd be her last project before she takes on this documentary about misogyny in the film industry. And Gannon makes this like little announcement to the crew and he goes, here's your first bit of family business. I'm in love with Paige here. They are friends still, but she won't give me the time of day. So I'm going to be wearing her down during the course of this shoot. And I'd appreciate you all singing my praises to her. Literally like he's so abrasive and disregards any of what she wants or her boundary like she, he crosses over her what is happening outside why is there so much noise can we relax please um anywho anyway he's just so disrespectful i can't i literally cannot our next quote oh my last thing to know about this is he's like completely disregarding her concerns as a like as a woman in the film industry, which she's making wants to make her entire documentary about and how that might be seen when she like is hooking, potentially hooking up with a like powerful male figure in the film industry. And like, she, he does not care how her reputation is seen or affected. And she's literally saying, no, he's like, I'm going to tell everyone and their mother that I'm going to coerce you back into bed. Our next quote that just makes me want to die they're like hanging out. It literally just goes, Gannon was so big, so male. His presence made her apartment feel even smaller than it was. Someone push me off a bridge, please. Our next one. They're like still in this weird argument. This entire book was a waste of time, honestly. I'm over it. And they're in this argument. And of course the Megan thing comes up again. And cause that's like one of their main things. Like he didn't disclose information to her. She doesn't trust him. <laughs> he doesn't respect her. It's all great and lovely. And then there is this argument and he go, Gannon goes, so to you it was a fling, but you still wanted to see if I'd be interested in something more. She shrugged miserably. I don't know, it was a thousand humility, humiliating moments ago. It's hard to remember exactly what I was thinking. You wanted to continue things and then fucking Megan shows up acting like an asshole and sh shames you and then you're just done. Shit. I don't know whose perspective this is. I think Paige. You're a strong, capable, smart woman, Paige. Yet you let someone run you off of what you wanted because you weren't willing to stand up for yourself. He literally takes none of the blame of what happens. If Gannon has no haters, I'm dead. 
And then the last quote, which literally, I think this might be the worst. So this is like literally at the end of the book, near the end of the book, where he, I think they've decided they're back together, I guess, somehow he coerced her into a relationship. And Ganon is, this is a little monologue. Potential and vision were two things he was rarely wrong about. And that's what he saw in his relationship with Paige. He may have had to drag her into it, kicking and screaming, but they worked better than either of them had anticipated. And he'd had rather high expectations there. Let me read that again. He may have had to drag her into it, kicking and screaming. That sounds consensual to me. It sounds like someone who respects someone's boundaries and respects someone's wants and needs. Great. I don't even need to tell you the plot sucked. Like literally the romance was terrible. Ganon's literally one of the worst main love interests I've ever read about. He just ripped of misogyny and toxicity and was not great. Something I will note, this is like a part of the plot is Paige is like a health junkie and she like constantly shames like quote unquote junk food and stuff. We already have enough of that now in the real world with diet culture. Let's not put it in our books. Like it's not cute, fun, or quirky. Let's Let's stop romanticizing that. Let's talk about the tick characters. This is gonna be short and sweet. I found all of them insufferable. I literally almost DNF this book because I couldn't stand anyone. The only one I liked was Tony. I think he was another producer and I liked the TV contestants. Like I didn't have any beef with them, they were fine. Let's talk about the book cover. This book cover was a jump scare. I know that she redesigned it. I think this is the redesign. But let's talk about the original one. I'm afraid. Imagine you're out in public and you see that. People are brave, but this is this is simply not it. Not it at all. Thank goodness for cartoon covers. That was a good move to rebrand re this. Final thoughts. Overall, this book made me want to pull off my fingernails, light my hair on fire, go through Purdue Dietetics again. And if anyone knows what I went through at Purdue Dietetics or anyone went through Purdue Di Dietetics, you know just how bad this book would have to be to want to go through that again. Willingly. This book reeked of misogyny. It was just a constant toxic relationship. No one was likable. And I just found everything so annoying. I've literally never gotten the ick so much from a character. Ganon literally is the worst. It took me three days to write a review because I was so stunned by what I read, also go follow me on Goodreads, shameless plug, where I post my reviews first there. Like this had me questioning if I like men, made me wishing I would never read again. It was just terrible. So all in all, I gave it one out of five stars, almost DNF'd it, and I hope that you do not read this. If you did enjoy this, like that's your opinion. You are, you are free to like whatever books you care to. Um, this is just what I, this is how I felt reading it. So that's that. I don't want to give any more time to the book. I think maybe this is like, this is the closure I need to get over this book because it really just grinded my gears and made me very upset and sent me into a bad reading slump. There are the good ones where a book is so good that you can't read any books because it won't match up to it. And then there are the bad ones like this one makes you never want to read again. So thanks for watching today, guys. Be sure to like this video, it helps me a lot. If you also dislike this or you like dramatic negative reviews, like this video. Comment below if you felt the same way. Let me know your thoughts. If you also read this, I wanna hear what you thought. And then be sure to subscribe so you can follow along on our little book club journey we are in and turn on bell notifications so you don't miss any videos from yours truly. Thanks for watching today, guys. I want to be done with this video because I'm over it. I'm over it, honestly. Be sure to check out all the other socials, Instagram, TikTok, all dietitian EMK, and I'll see you guys next week. All right, bye. Stay away from toxic and misogynistic men.